Welcome to the PSP 3000 Take Apart Guide. To begin, flip the unit over, and on the left side, release the door, revealing the battery. Now, using the battery tab, simply lift the battery out of place. Now, using a Phillips head screwdriver, remove the seven Phillips head screws from the outside of the casing. For this one, you will have to remove the void sticker, so this will avoid any warranty that you have with Sony. Once those screws are removed, now you can remove the faceplate of the PSP. Simply just lift up on the faceplate and remove the directional pad. To remove the LCD, Take your flathead screwdriver and on the bottom of the LCD on each side there is a clip that will need to be popped out of place. Once that's complete, flip the LCD over and there you will see the ribbon cables. To remove the main ribbon cable, it simply has a lock bar that will need to be flipped up and then the cable will slide free. Now do the same for the next three cables. To remove the analog stick, grab your Phillips head screwdriver and remove the two screws from the analog controller. Once this screw is removed, remove the bracket and you can also remove the left button. Now remove the last Phillips head screw. And using your flat head screwdriver, Release the lock bar and remove the ribbon cable. Now using your flat head screwdriver, gently remove the ribbon cable for the plastic plunger. This is only held on with adhesive, so there is no need to use excessive force. Once that is complete, now remove one final Phillips head screw from the assembly, and the assembly should lift free.
Now to remove the analog stick itself, you will only need to remove the ribbon cable from the logic board. This is held in with a flip lock connector. Now grab your Phillips head screwdriver and remove the Phillips head screw from the bracket holding in the right controller button. Once that's complete, the button should lift free. Now to remove the I.O. board, take your Phillips head screwdriver and remove the Phillips head screw inside the I.O. board. Now take your flathead screwdriver and lift the locking mechanism up on the ribbon connector cable. Now to remove the headphone board, take your Phillips head screwdriver and remove the Phillips head screw inside the headphone board. Now you will see a wire connected to the logic board and simply remove this. If the small connector does come off the logic board, this is not a problem. The small connector can be put on the logic board without any problems. Now using your flathead screwdriver, on the right hand side of the plunger, simply lift this out of place. and gently peel the wire away from the casing. Now using your flathead screwdriver, flip the lock bar and remove the cable. Now to remove the UMD door, grab your flathead screwdriver and there is a white box and a spring that will need to be removed from the casing. Gently lift these out of place. Once that is complete, now flip the unit over, open the UMD door, and at the bottom, on either side, there are two notches that will need to be released from the casing. Use your flathead screwdriver and gently lift these out of place. The UMD disk drive is held in by two ribbon cables. The first ribbon cable has a slide bar lock, and the second a flip lock. Now flip the unit over and remove the four Phillips head screws from the UMD drive. Once this is complete, the drive should lift free.
Now to remove the logic board, remove the last Phillips head screw, and remove the silver casing from around the case. This should simply lift out. Now to remove the speaker, get your flat head screwdriver and gently pop this out of place. Finally, remove the airport antenna from the logic board. And this should allow the logic board to come free from the casing. Thank you for choosing PowerBookMedic.com.